What's up everybody? Today we're going to be talking about the Blackmagic 4K camera and debate on if it's still a good or bad camera to own in 2024. My name is Keith and I'm a Blackmagic 4K camera user and when I was looking up information on the camera I want to know if it was still a good camera and worth me investing the money in it when I originally bought it and the short answer to this is yes. Now of course it all depends on your wants and needs from a camera but of course if you're after a cinema camera and you can now buy higher much higher resolution cameras like a 6k or 8k sensor is the 4k actually good enough when it comes to resolution the bigger is better and allows you to do various things like to crop in on video without losing quality and with a much higher resolution you can do this with no image loss but you can still do the same with the 4k I did look at the 6K version of the Blackmagic camera, but after looking up information on video file sizes, after shooting from the two cameras, the 6K used so much more storage over the 4K, and for the work that I was going to be shooting for YouTube and socials, then the 4K is plenty enough for my needs. So I decided to opt for the 4K and keep down my file sizes. With regards to pricing, you're probably looking at around £1,000 to £1,500 for the camera body only, and that's second hand. But if you can wait it out and look online, then you can do what I did, and I actually picked this up for £570, which is an absolute bargain. However, the one downside about this camera though is that you need to rig the camera up to make it to make the most of it. You can use the camera as is, but it does limit things on which we'll go into over in a bit. The other thing that this is, you need to grab yourself a lens to go with it, and the default lens mount for the 4K is micro four thirds, and there's some absolutely fantastic available lenses for it. You can also get some adapters to add the Canon EF lenses and other variation. So for me, I ended up getting the Olympus 7 to 14 mil f2.8 as I needed a wide angle lens when shooting properly work, and it seemed to be the favorable lens on the internet from using Blackmagic and that lens together and so far I've obviously been loving it. So once you have the lens and the body, you'll then find out that the battery life isn't the best when using the, the usual battery, so you'll be wanting to get an external battery pack and adapter. Then you can go from using SD cards to using a portable hard drive to allow more storage space for filming and allow shooting of a higher quality when still allowing the right into the hard drive. And of course, to attach all this to the camera, you'll need a rig to mount everything together. The joys of this though is that you can build up the camera the way that you want it and you only need to buy things down the line to upgrade as and when needed. If you have lots of spare batteries and you don't mind swapping them out then you don't need an external battery pack just yet. Yes, it would make it much easier and less hassle but there's an additional cost that comes with that. The joys of the rig camera is that it's easy to switch things around and change things as there's multiple mounting points on the camera to allow this, well the rig to allow it. I've changed mine about three times over the last year to allow it to become better suited for my shooting. The majority of work that I do with my Blackmagic is property work, so obviously coupled it with the, the 1740 lens which allows me to have the wide angle lens which works well in low light and there's a, a wide range of codecs and files that I can shoot on if needed. One drawback I found when shooting in slow motion in the 4K, it actually crops the lens focal lens so you lose some of the wide angle element which was a deal breaker for me but might be an advantage to other people. So the way that I got around this is shooting slow motion is drop the resolution down to 2.7K instead of the 4K, then the image isn't cropped. I don't lose the wide angle focal length and I can shoot slow motion and it's still a high resolution file for the end result. One downside compared to the other kit that I usually use, which is the Fuji X-H1, is that the Blackmagic doesn't have any in-body image stabilization. So when you're using this handheld, you're gonna get some fairly shaky footage. But when I use this with the Zion Crane 2S gimbal, then I get smooth shots and it isn't an issue at all. But if you use it for running gun stuff, it may be a little bit shaky, even when shooting in slow motion. There is the new gyro stabilization option available from a firmware update, and there's also warp stabilization in editing software. But sometimes, depending on the shot, it'll start to look like jello after it's been stabilized, like the, the side shake a bit and stuff like that. The camera doesn't have autofocus when recording, which may be a downfall for some people as a lot of people want autofocus when recording. It does have autofocus prior to recording, which you can use on the camera by pressing the screen and there's also the designated button. However, if you focus on a subject in the frame and they move out of the focal plane which have been selected, the camera will, won't follow them and stay where you are focused on. For my shooting style and needs or, and the work that I shoot, this isn't a big deal for me 
and of course when shooting with a wide angle lens there's a big safety zone for everything being in focus anyway due to the nature of the wide lens. One option that I use is the function buttons on the top of the camera. I've got one set of four, the focus peaking lines and I've also marked them as red so when I'm manually focusing I can see visually what's in focus rather than guessing. And again if you're using the cinema camera you're not really going to want to be doing auto focusing. Yes fair enough if you're doing some run and gun stuff it may be a little easier with auto focus but to manual focus the camera is absolutely it's easy and like I said you've got the visual representation with the the focus peaking lines that you can just use them and you can get away with it. There's still sometimes when I shoot something with this camera and I bring it into the editing software the image just looks so absolutely amazing. I'm always blown away by it. The bonus of shooting in Blackmagic RAW 2 means I can have some extra wiggle room with the exposure after shooting as I can amend the ISO when editing and highlight reduction tick box in Premiere Pro is an absolute lifesaver for when I'm shooting properly work especially on a sunny day. It allows me to expose for the room and allow the window to be slightly blown up when you use the highlight recovery you get to see the outside world rather than just a big white blur. When it comes to the size, uh, the camera is a bit bigger than a mirrorless setup and may take a little bit longer to set up during a shoot and there's drawbacks with having manual focus and things like that but this, this camera is still relevant and still worth the money and still a camera which people should buy in 2024. The short films, promo work, weddings, commercials, real estate videos and so much more can be achieved with this and the sky is the limit of what you can create with it. The camera is a fantastic tool which you can use for your work and once you've had a black magic it's hard to go back to something else. I did say that I may take a lot longer to set up but personally and the way that mine is set up when it comes to a shoot, I pull the camera out of the bag, attach a battery, put it on the gimbal and in about 30 seconds I'm balanced up and ready to go. The other thing you'll find with this camera as well when you have your sort of mirrorless camera or DSLR setup and the Blackmagic one, when you have them both out together people see that the Blackmagic is a much more professional camera and looks more impressive. So there's, there's times when I've done stuff with uh, commercial work and I've used the Fuji setup and people sort of look at the camera thinking is that is that what you're using it looks like a little toy camera but then there's times when i've took out the black magic and set it up and like oh, that must be worth thousands of pounds at because they perceive it as a more professional camera for some reason even though you can probably get roughly the same images from both of them obviously the black magic is more cinematic due to a cinema camera but the the end result you can get with the same camera however the perceived version of a black magic makes you look like a professional so if that's something as well that you may be looking into then that's another advantage so if you're currently on the fence about this camera and whether you should purchase one of these amazing cameras then get yourself knocked off the fence press the buy button and don't look back hope you enjoyed the video and if you haven't already why not give the channel a subscribe leave a comment on the video about the camera if you've got one if you're looking to get one what you like about it what you don't like and also give the video a thumbs up because it helps with the algorithm algorithm the algorithm and until next time see ya